Hello and welcome to my new video. In this one, I'll be talking about system maintenance in Word Linux. Um, I will demonstrate two commands which are commonly used on system D-based distributions. And uh, then I will talk about system logging or syslog D1 in Word Linux. And then I'll share a few tips which you can consider as bonus. Now, talking about uh, the commands which are comparable to or basically used in system D-based distributions to find out problems and errors in the system. People commonly use systemctl followed by a switch uh, failed and so this, this basically gives you the system services which are failed and then to find system general system errors people also use general ctl followed by a switch fnp. Some people also use dmessage uh, but that you know these two are like more than enough uh, used and then the output of these two commands is uh, analyzed by people and then they use that output to find the solutions of your problem. Now, when we come to Void Linux, we do not have anything installed by default. I mean, if we look at this uh, official uh, handbook, it clearly says that there is no system logging service enabled or installed by default. So it's up to the user if he wants to, if he feels there's a need, then he can go and install uh, from a variety of choices. For example, if I just want to demonstrate, sorry. We can see here that we have a number of choices, right? And metalog and RS RS syslog, sorry, RS log are uh, mentioned already in the recommendation. Now, uh, in my opinion, it's better to stay with the native package, which we can see here. Uh, it's mentioned in the in the documentation. Plus, by uh, by name, I can tell you it's a native package, or it has been specifically crafted for Linux. I like to stay native as much as possible. And then uh, apart from this, this clock lock is basically an implementation of the mechanism to monitor system logs by the authors of Runit. So all in all, that will be my primary uh, choice when it comes to troubleshooting system uh, based on void. And then after the installation of this package, all we need to do is to enable these two services. So let's have a quick, uh, quick demo about this. Just copy uh, the name of the package uh, from the web page. I'll share the link in the description of this video, and then um, we will enable the services. So the services are, as we can see, mentioned there. We'll just copy it and then go back to terminal. And we know that in Void Linux to enable service, we need to sim link. Uh, that would be so first of all let's see the services are available in the masters directory so etc sv and there we can see that sock log plus uh, nano k log is are available right so we'll just do our sim link now so sudo and then we'll use small s or soft link not capital s Right, and then we need to also do the same for sock log service. And let's do a test that if services are enabled, we'll do sudo sv service the status nano k log d. So we can see the service is up and running for almost six seconds. Let us do the same for other service. And that's also running. Um, I can use this service log as sv log tail. That's a command name. And then I need to have a filter called errors. And then uh, it will show me errors. So I don't see any errors here actually. Oh yeah, I, I, there's one thing I forgot uh, actually to discuss that if I go to the browser, the web page, uh, the logs are limited to the root only, root user only. So either I need to run the command as sudo or I need to add my user to sock log group. So first of all, let's, let's do this using uh, uh, as a root. So
so I have a couple of errors there. I'll stop using Capital C. So I know I have an issue in Linux with TPM. I need this to run Windows, so something I'm willing to ignore. Um, I just realized that I have this error as well in KFS. This is basically my shared drive that I use between Linux and Windows. So there is an issue there. I need to probably Google. I have no idea what the hell is that. And then TPM again, I can ignore it. EEPROM again, I can Google up and find the issue. But again, these two, uh, TPM and EEPROM are kind of ignorable in my opinion. Only I would like to have a view on this uh, this, uh, this drive because it's a shared drive it has all of my data so this is one example uh, so what we discussed uh, so far we discussed that we need to install uh, this package called socklog then we need to enable these two services and then I demonstrated one command which is uh, svlog tail followed by errors to filter out the problems and errors uh, if I just do it without errors, it will show me a huge log, whatever happened, successfully or failed, it will show me everything, which is not in really, you know, I'm not interested to, to see what is what has been successful in my system. So I'll just focus on errors. So this is the command that we need to keep uh, in mind. Now, in case if anybody is interested to run this command as a regular user, what they can do is to just add their us uh, user to uh, to the sock log a group using user mod command they will add and then we'll mention the group the group as we know is sock log and then you can have your uh, username in my case i is me for me i don't really want to add myself to many groups uh, let's keep it sudo it's more secure I, at least i feel it's more secure in my opinion so that's how we uh, can enable system logging services in uh, word linux and then use it to uh, uh, for the system maintenance purposes. So in case of bonus tips, I would like to share a few tips basically. Uh, one of them is that we can also use uh, dmessage to find out uh, problems and we can also use services status command to find out problems. So um, if you guys remember this command I ran a while back, this is the command I used to find out the status of this particular service, right? So in case if I am uh, willing to uh, find something which is exactly the replica of system failed uh, on system D-based uh, distributions, I would probably be using uh, service status. This is my working directory, right? And then I'll say all services. And then, um, uh, okay, no, sorry. I need to filter out uh, using graph so this will basically I'm just trying to filter out that whatever is running don't show this and then uh, I just want to see failed services so uh, this is one other way I can find out the, the services which are failing and then I can drill down using logs into to troubleshoot the problem one other command that we can use is D message as I mentioned also people also use this on uh, system D based distributions uh, that would be so if I just do the message of oh, oh, prometric so if I do just throw this command I will have a huge log which is of course uh, relevant and I can see there's something red so I'm in fact interested in red right so what I'll do is uh, the message then I need to filter out the output so I'll use uh, the label or oh, sorry this uh, search label and then um, my filter would be um, emergency alert uh, critical and then error again these commands are like widely available on man pages or you can also google uh, you, you don't need to remember all of this you can just write down in a notepad and use them whenever necessary so as soon as I enter this command we know that uh, we already saw in the syslog uh, the output that these two were the problems I was having one was uh, TPM and the other was EEPROM here we don't see the NTFS thing that we saw up there so this is second way of uh, finding issues on uh, Word Linux so to, to sum up uh, this thing uh, I have discussed three ways basically one is via system log 
here we discussed the package to be installed and service to be enabled and the command then I talked about uh, using services status uh, output this one to find failing services and then drill down the details to find solutions and lastly I discussed D message being used to filter out errors as well which is this command now before I sign off I also want to mention that it's better to keep your system lean and clean so uh, whenever you are going to remove a package for example let's say if I'm going to remove for example Pac-Man right um, I it's advisable to use hyphen capital R capital R basically is recursive so it will not only remove Pac-Man from my system but it will also remove all the dependencies which were required by Pac-Man but are no longer required by any other package uh, we call them orphan uh, dependencies right so whenever you have to uh, remove a package always remember to use capital R uh, to so we also clean our system from unwanted uh, dependencies or files or libraries basically which are not required by system at all in case uh, you don't know uh, what I'm talking about you can just type xbps remove and enter you'll see all the which is there so this is the one I, I was talking about all right uh, also in, in, in some cases uh, in the past if you have not used this uh, switch in past you can do it right now you can do it like sudo xbps remove and hyphen small o and that will remove that will find uh, some orphan libraries or uh, which are not required by any other package in my case I have two only and I'm you know I'll remove it and I have a happy clean system one other tip I will also like to share is to use capital O which is cleaning the cache so I mean don't do, do this too often just do it in a while like once in three months maybe but it again depends uh, on your personal choices uh, I normally do it in like three months or two months once only so this basically cache is the repository of all packages which have been upgraded and are no longer required definitely when we upgrade our system on an ongoing basis in some cases however we do need to downgrade like for example the package is not working properly and uh, there are some issues like stability so in those cases which are by the way very rare in those cases we may need, we may need to downgrade uh, to the previous version and then in those cases we need to have that package available in the cache but normally like for example when I updated my system uh, since then I have no issues at all that's why I can very safely run this command and free up some space on my um, uh, storage device one other and last thing I want to uh, highlight uh, when it comes to systems maintenance uh, that is from the official handbook we need to go to uh, kernels not fine yeah kernels there so we'll go to kernel and there uh, I'll talk about removing the old kernel so um, in my you know what happens is when the distribution is updated whether it is void Linux or any other the older kernel is never removed it, it, it stays in there uh, in, in the installed actually and active it just gets overwritten with the newer version of it so we never see it but uh, what happens is when you have a dedicated boot partition that kind of fills up as we have uh, older uh, kernels being accumulated or gathered and in some cases you may get an error that you are unable to upgrade because there is no space and you will see th there is plenty of space already in the root folder but the boot uh, partition gets filled because of all kernels uh, this is the line I'm talking about if, I mean if my speech is not clear please um, open this link and read it for yourself so what I'm talking about is that we need to remove all kernels uh, once in, again in a while like three months or something uh, when we are absolutely sure our system is working as intended and newer kernel is not causing any problem then it's advisable to use VK purge command this comes uh, pre-installed already we don't need to do anything just uh, copy this command and we'll uh, go to terminal
So this command is very easy to use. We can see it has only uh, three options. So first of all, let's see how many kernels I have on my system. You see, I have a whole lot of kernels all the way going back to 5.1. This is my latest one. So now if I want to remove one particular uh, kernel, I can mention the name. But in my case, I don't need all of them, so I can just do move all. All right, so all of these have been de deleted. I cannot see how much space I recovered, but again, um, what I know is that my system has been cleaned from old kernels. Uh, it has been cleaned from orphan uh, libraries, and then we have done all the system log thing. So I hope this video helps and thanks for watching as always. Goodbye.